the world, God bless you. We've been getting questions like, I wanna get connected, how do I get plugged in? If that sounds like you, send me a message, melissa at resoundchurch.com, and I'll get you plugged in. Coming up next, we have an incredible word and an incredible worship, and we believe you're gonna be blessed. Everybody, welcome to Resound Worship. Would you sing with us as we glorify the God who steps into our Egypt? Oh, we praise you, Jesus. Oh, you're the God of miracles. Yeah. I won't forget the wonder of how you brought. Exodus of my heart You found me, you freed me Held back the waters from my release Oh Yahweh You're the God who fights for me Lord of every victory Hallelujah, yeah Hallelujah You have torn
hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus, hallelujah. As you have torn apart the sea, you have led me through the deep, hallelujah, hallelujah.
Church family, it is our prayer as Resound Church, as pastors, as leaders, as team members here, that as things seem to change daily, different reports, different uh, news, whatever, it seems to change on the daily, that these moments right here where we can gather and worship together and be encouraged by his word have been an anchor for you and your faith and your walk with Jesus in the middle of all that is changing and going on. And I want to thank you for your continued generosity as a church because we've been able then to be that anchor for others who don't normally set foot in church, who are looking for hope. We've had so many stories of people who have tuned in online and have felt what they can't describe, but we know as the Holy Spirit or Jesus speaking to them. And I want to encourage you that we are not done yet as a church, that we know and it is one of our beliefs that God has called us to live generously, not to attain generosity like it's something you've grabbed, but to live generously continually. And before we close, maybe you remember a lot of our generosity talks and encouragements around this have been how God would bless you as we live generously. And I 1000% believe that that is true. But another aspect of God's generosity is, and his blessing, is, is the, the, genero- the blessing of the recipient of this generosity. And can I tell you, even within the last week, it's been incredible and encouraging to see us as a church live generously and the recipients of that generosity give thanks to God. And we, as we've seen, uh, we've been able to help people pay their rent or their mortgage. We've been able to help people fix their cars. We've been able to help people get groceries and pay for bills all within just the last little, like two weeks. And it's been incredible to see not only the people who live generously and who do that not feel like they're losing stuff, but we've seen God bless their lives and we've seen the people who receive it experience the blessing of God on their life. And church, I wanna encourage you that we wanna continue to be that blessing in this time, in this moment as a church. And so two different people that I wanna call out. One is if you do need help, please reach out to me, uh, reach out to us as a church. We can't promise the world, but we wanna do whatever we can to help show you the love of Jesus to help whatever it is you might be experiencing and if you are on the other end like so many people are where you're still blessed you still have a job you're still able to work whatever the case is would you continue to live generously with me and even maybe give a little bit more than we normally could because there's people who continue to reach out to us who are just stuck in unfortunate circumstances and we believe it is the calling of the church to live generously not just individually where we said we give and and we believe that God's gonna bless it but as a church as a whole, we want to live generously to those around us and in our communities in this time. So thank you, church, for giving. Thank you for believing that God has called us to live generously. And now we're going to dive into the Word of God, and I believe God will encourage you. And as we get ready, you can, however you choose to give, you can get your phones out, and you can text your gift to 77977, or go online, resoundchurch.com slash give, whatever the method is for you. I believe God's going to bless you, and I thank you for your generosity. Now let's dive into the Word of God today. Welcome to our Resound Church experience. I'm so thrilled that you could join us today, whether you're in person at one of of our in-person gatherings or you're watching online. I want to say thank you for joining us. We are honored that you would invest your time to be a part of a church community in Jesus' name. Hey, today we are continuing our series of talks on soul control. In this season, I think more than ever, we have got to get control of our soul. Our soul, the Bible describes it as the seat of our emotions, the way we feel who we are, the really the truest self that can be influenced by internal and external influences. I believe in order for us to be healthy, we must develop a healthy soul. The word is clear that we are prosperous and we are healthy as our soul is prosperous and our as our soul is healthy. And so today we're digging into something I think we need more than ever. We're talking about quieting our soul, making our soul quiet, relaxing, bringing our soul down with all the chaos that is happening around us, learning the art of what it means to calm your soul. The Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 23, uh, as we spoke about a couple of weeks ago, 
that may the God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through. May your whole spirit, soul, and body kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's speaking to our spirit, soul, and body. The three parts of who we are. We're made up of spirit. And that's the part of us that is spiritual. It's the part when you worship God, you worship it in, in spirit and truth. Your spirit connected to God's spirit. But what's interesting is speaking to the soul. And he says, the God of peace, the God of peace who wants to bring peace to your soul in Jesus' name. The Bible says in John 12, 27, now my soul is troubled. This is Jesus saying this. He's saying, now my soul is troubled, and what shall I say? Wow, this is powerful. Because Jesus says this, my soul is troubled. Even Jesus says, hey, my soul is troubled. The problem is, is we go around life when our soul is troubled and we don't know how to put a language to it. Even Jesus himself could put language to a troubled soul. When the seed of your emotions, who you are in the inside, when you have turmoil or trouble, listen to what it says. And what shall I say? Wow. What it's saying is when you have a troubled soul, you have to say something. There's a response to a troubled soul. You don't try and feed it with things that are unhealthy. You, the response to a troubled soul is really what comes out of your mouth, your confession, the language. And it goes on to say, what should I say? And then this is the response. Father, save me from this hour? Question mark. No. He's saying, God, I've got trouble because I know it's coming. I, there's turmoil Rescue me from this hour? No, no. It's like right now I'm going to be present in what you've called me to. And it says this, it was for this very reason I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Listen to this. Then a voice from heaven, then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and it will glorify again. The crowd that was there heard it and it, it listen, said it had a thunder. Others said an angel had spoken to him. What's interesting is says Jesus, his response to a troubled soul is that he would speak. He was honest about his questions. Can you save his real, uh, really honest moment? But listen to what then happens. He then shifts. He says, this is going to be my response to a troubled soul. For this cause, for this reason, other translations it says cause. For this cause, for this cause I came to this hour. And what happens is he spoke, and he spoke about his call, his future. He spoke about hope. And listen to then what happens. It says, then a voice came from heaven. What I believe is when we begin to speak out the word of God in response to a troubled soul, that heaven begins to speak to us, that God begins to remind us as we speak out in faith of who we are in Christ. Listen, I believe heaven speaks. Heaven speaks through his word. He speaks from spirit to spirit. He speaks to you. When you're, tr you're troubled inside, listen, speak out in Jesus' name. Bring calm to your troubled soul. Uh, I, I believe many of us sometimes go through life managing this troubled soul. We manage a troubled soul at nighttime or <clears throat> during the daytime or working out monkeys in our head during office hours at work or whatever we're doing. And I believe we are managing a troubled soul the wrong way. The Bible is clear that when we have a troubled soul to speak, to say, and the response to that is heaven will speak, I believe, to us. Jesus wants to speak to us in this moment. And it, I believe the word of God is true. And Psalms 121 says, surely I've calmed and quieted my soul. I believe we need to quiet our soul, bring calm to our soul. I, I, I'll tell you, I think sometimes what we do, we have a troubled soul and we speak to our soul, but we say the wrong things. We're saying things about how, uh, how we're not, going to truly make it. We're not going to succeed. What will people think of me? Or we remind ourselves and we talk about things and say things to our soul, reminding ourselves of mistakes we've made, things we've done wrong. We say to our soul the wrong things. But I believe when we say things that are the word of God, who God says we are, I believe heaven speaks to us, church. Heaven begins to remind us of who we are in him.
as we begin to speak it out in Jesus' name. There's nothing like just going over when we feel guilty, when we feel shame, when we feel horrible about who we are. It's amazing we can replay things in our mind. We can just begin to think through things we've done and who we are and rob ourselves of wrong identity. You know, I remember when I was on my first date with Alyssa, uh, I, I was just kind of a very young adult. I think I was about 22. And I remember dating her. I was really nervous. And we went out. We had a beautiful, beautiful date. I took her. We, we went to just studying architecture at the time. And I took her to some beautiful uh, buildings that were really a lot of depth and, and design. And uh, I bought some Frank Lloyd Wright uh, books to really understand architecture so I could actually sound like I'm not an idiot. And so I really tried to educate myself in architecture so I could at least kind of have a conversation with this beautiful gal that was interesting and an adventurous, Jesus-loving gal. And so I'm talking to her. We go, I'm showing her all this stuff. We have a great time. And then I remember it came time for when it was that moment I dropped her off. And I remember going, she was studying at the time university. And I remember taking her to to walk her up to the dorm, the room, to be a gentleman, say goodbye, and then walk away. And I remember just thinking to myself, this is a hard moment. Because I'm like, I don't know what to do in this moment. Because like, what do I do? What do you do in that moment, that first date? Do I like say goodbye? Do I give her a kiss? Do I high five her? Like what? Do I pound? Do I, what do I do in that moment? Do I give her a big swain hug? Like what, what do you do? Because I know what the movies tell me to do. The movies tell me to like grab her and do one of these big smooches. And I, in that moment, it could just be kind of too intense, too quick. And I'm done. That's it. So here's the thing. I'm thinking, what do I do in this moment? This is a scary moment. And I remember she looked at me. I remember beautiful eyes, like just looking her in the eyes. And she was looking at my stunning uh, blue eyes, right? We're looking at each other. And there's this moment of pause where I was just like, just kind of working out. What, what should I do? I don't know. And I'll never get, I was like, I, I, I'll call you. And I walked off. And I got to tell you, I replayed that in my mind so many times. And I replayed it like slow motion. I was not smooth. I did not have swagger. I looked, I felt like I was such an idiot in that moment. I was like, my goodness, you couldn't, I literally in my mind, I'm replaying it slow-mo like, no, call you. And I remember feeling like such a moron, thinking she's not going to want to go on another date with me. I'm, what a, this is stupid, you messed it up. What's so funny is I remember talking to Alyssa about it way later on, years later. She didn't, couldn't even remember that moment at all. And I created because I was telling myself something, reminding myself of something and created a picture. I kept talking and I fed that soul part of me. I kept losing confidence, reminding myself, feeling like a mess up, not feeling great. Listen, this is what happens when we say the wrong things to our soul. We replay things and we feel bad and it affects our confidence. Listen, say the Word of God. Speak the Word of God. Let heaven speak to you like Jesus spoke to you. Quiet your soul through speaking to your soul. You know, in John 8.1, I love this moment. In John 8.1, where there's a woman that was caught in the act of adultery. And these people bring the woman out. And what's funny is the man was nowhere to be seen, right? They only bring the female out. And they bring her out. And... They say, these people, all these people say, this woman, she was caught in the act of adultery. It's time to stone her. We're going to throw stones at her and kill her as a method of killing people, punishing. They would just get have a crowd and they would throw stones. Jesus, the Bible says, was just writing in the sand. Now, what's interesting is many people speculate on what he was writing. He's writing grace, all sorts of things. The reality is, if we were supposed to know what he was writing, it would have said it. It doesn't say it. It just says he was writing the ground. Honestly, he was probably doing scribbles. God knows he, what, what we do know. All we know is he was writing in the sand and he was paying zero attention to their judgments and accusations. Then he responds. He was quiet in the moment because they were trying to rile Jesus up. There's, she's got to be punished. Get behind our cause. And Jesus says, well, 
stands up after they say, is this woman, should we not stone her? He says, you with, without sin cast the first stone. And the Bible says, from the eldest to the youngest, because the older ones tend to have a bit more perspective on how bad mistakes they've made. You could hear thump, 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 stone by stone. Everyone walked away and she says, look, they don't judge you. Now go sin no more. Listen, Jesus, Jesus did not react to accusation and being riled up. He responded in grace. I think the issue isn't so much other people throwing stones at us as much as we throw stones at ourselves. And I think in our lives, we're holding stones ready to throw at ourselves. And we have these narratives and self-talk that we, gotta, we have to let that sound of thumping, that sound of grace of I'm letting go of judgments and anger and resentment. Because listen, when you have an unhealthy soul, it affects everyone else around you. Because when you're mean and judgmental of yourself, you're often mean and judgmental of everybody else. When you're harsh and critical of yourself, usually because that's what you do your soul, you speak out of your soul and you are often harsh and judgmental of other people. It's time to let go of those stones and what you're doing to yourself and be someone of rest. I believe what happens on the outside is impacted by your soul. I love the picture. I love the picture of when Jesus calms the storm. What's interesting, the miracle of Jesus calming the storm is pretty cool. But what's even bigger is the fact that when there was a storm, he was asleep in the boat. That is a greater picture of peace than actually even the waters being calm. We think peace is the waters being calm. Absolutely wrong. Peace is what Jesus did prior to that, which was he was sleeping. He was sleeping and everyone else had angst, waking up Jesus. Hey, we know you're the son of God and everything and you've done all sorts of miracles. But hey, we're going to die just so you know. They are freaking out. They have turmoil in their soul. Jesus, all that happened when he calmed the storm, that was an external reflection of what was inside of him, peace. He had a peaceful soul. I believe in your life, what you're after is you're trying to calm the storm without calming your soul. Listen, calm your soul and watch the storm come in alignment with your soul in Jesus' name. In your household, there might be a storm in your house and fighting, bickering, lack of peace. Hey, calm your soul and watch what happens in your house. Your house will reflect your soul. May your soul be healthy because every all bits of health, pieces of health in your life come from a healthy soul. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10.4, the weapons we fight are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. We take every idea, thought, every monkey that's in our head, and we make it obedient to Jesus. Not because of natural weapons, things of the world, but because of supernatural powers that we get from the Holy Spirit. Make every thought captive. Every thought that your soul comes up with that is not, that isn't contrary to the word of God, make it captive to Jesus. Say, you are submitting to the word of God. That you feel like you've got no future. My Bible makes very clear that God has a plan for me, a purpose for me, a hope and a future. That he works all things together for the, those that love him and are called, are called according to his purpose. I'm going to make captives these thoughts that are not in alignment with the word of God. I love what Philippians 4.12 says. I know what it is to be in need. I know what it is to have plenty. I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Whether fed or hungry, living in plenty or want, I can do all things, these old things through him who gives me strength. God gives us strength. God gives us strength to our soul. So when you feel weak, listen, God's strength is amazing. When Jesus talked about the Spirit, when he talked about the Spirit with the woman at the well, he said this, you'll always be refreshed and filled. You'll never be thirsty. He's not talking about physical thirst. He's talking about the thirst that's created by the soul, that we our need for God. The whole, the, the Jesus-sized hole in our life, you will never thirst again when you allow the Spirit of God to move in your life. He will give you that strength that you need. I remember as a kid, we used to play these um, video games at Video Easy, which is a video store. We had these 
DVDs and videotapes. We couldn't download things like we do today. We had to go somewhere. And we, our, our blockbuster was called Video Easy in Australia. And they had this section when they had all these arcade games. I'll tell you, these things were just purely designed to keep putting money in coins, 50 cent coins, 50 cent coins, 50 cent coins, one after the other, one after the other. And these were designed to be a deep hole to keep grabbing your money. And you'll keep playing thinking, man, if I just get to the next level, that's kind of what life is like. If I just get this new iPhone, if I just finish my degree, once my kids get a little bit older, once my life changes a little bit, then my life will be filled. Can I tell you, your life is like that arcade machine. You just keep pouring more in and it's less fulfilling. The only thing that will fill us up and truly give us strength is Jesus, finding rest in him, calming your soul, being knowing who Jesus is, getting strength from him. Hmm. In Luke 12, 18, it says, So he said, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build a greater, a build greater. And there I will store up my crops and goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? So he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards God. What he's speaking to, this is a beautiful parable about someone that stores a barn, but listen to what he says, stores his treasures in the barns. He says to his soul, I've stored all these things. You can say to your soul, man, my kids are overachieving. I've got the best school. I've got the best things in my life. But God says, you're not rich in me. You might be rich in things that can fade, but be rich in him. Listen, your life will be full of turmoil without God. We need God, God, let's be rich in God, recognizing if we are rich in everything but God, we're truly poor. We're truly poor. We have nothing when we don't have the presence of God inside of us. So the hit, what should we say to calm our soul? The last points, final things is first, the word of God, the word. Bring your soul into alignment with the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Your faith is built up. Bring your soul in alignment with the word. The second, prayer. Develop a rhythm of prayer in your life. Get up a little bit earlier tomorrow morning and the next morning and begin to have a rhythm of prayer when you're talk, as you're talking to God. Third is others. Others. Find others. That's why we go to church. If you can, get to church. Be around people. Stay connected because we need others to help build our faith. The next thing is, if you can, I'm praying for you to speak in tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, 4 says, anyone who speaks in tongues edifies himself, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. So prophecy is amazing for everyone, but for your personal growth, I'd say I want to encourage you, pray. Paul actually says to pray that all of you speak in tongues. I pray that you find this spiritual language. My prayer is for you because you edify yourself. And when you're entering challenging times, when you have that gift, when you discover what that is, it can change your life. The, ne the next is just to guard the effects of your heart and ask the question, what is your soul saying? And then how should you respond? So as your soul say, says things to you, you're not good enough. As feelings rise up that are not in alignment with the word of God, your soul will speak to you. It's time for you to speak to your soul and then let heaven speak to you in Jesus' name. Come on, let's be people that rest our soul, find strength in God, and calm our soul in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for watching. I'll tell you what, we love you. We want to connect with you, and I'm just believing the best is yet to come in Jesus' name for your life. Father, I pray for every person that's watching. I thank you that we're the head and not the tail. I pray a blessing over every life as God, as they go on in their week, whether they're working from home or going to an office, whether they're a student, single, married, a grandparent. I pray in Jesus' name that you bless every part of our lives in Jesus' name name. Thank you for everyone that's watching, whether that be in person or online, that God, you will move in a fresh way. Holy Spirit, move. Bring joy, peace, calling. I say, I say, we say to our souls, bless the Lord. We speak to our souls. And what we want to see is that heaven will speak to us. In your mighty name, Lord Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Love you, church. Bless you. We hope that word encouraged you today. Remember to get connected. Send me a message, melissa at resoundchurch.com. 
for prayer, prayer at resoundchurch.com. You can click on the link below if you feel like donating. And thank you so much. We hope you have a blessed week.